I can't understand why someone would go through the trouble of stealing a box with a very ancient corpse. This city's not that dull. I'm an archaeologist, so I thought I'd indulge in a quick study of this Ankaran sarcophagus everyone's so riled up about. My guess, from what I've read about it, is that it's a mummified Mesopotamian king. I needed confirmation. Since it's missing, I'm inclined to believe it was stolen, or intentionally misplaced, if you like. Clearly, though, it's not here. Hmm, interesting choice of words. Weren't you here to take it away? Wouldn't that make you an attempted thief? That definitely doesn't make it theft. If I stole it, I would know where it was, and most likely wouldn't be looking for it here. Oh, I really wish I had. All this speculation about the sarcophagus containing an antediluvian and being a portent of Gehenna is making me cringe. These are the kinds of ridiculous, superstitious assumptions I came here to debunk. Armageddon, Doomsday, the end of all kindred. It's a common facet of most mythologies. Fear that the world will end. Many believe Cain and the antediluvians will return to consume or destroy all kindred. I wholeheartedly disagree. No one I know has ever met one, but each of the clans and their bloodlines supposedly trace their origin to an original vampire, an antediluvian. Some swear these grandsires still exist into the present, but then kindred and kind believe a lot of strange things. Cain is the biblical first kindred and founder of the mythological first city, Enoch, a place where kindred and kind coexisted. I believe Cain's a figure concocted to personify the transition from nomadic society to agrarian society. That myth, like most, has been twisted by time. Thinbloods rarely exhibit features or powers of their clan and many can't embrace. Some are even rumored to have reproduced. Many kindred are terrified that their weak blood heralds the dissipation of every bloodline. Somewhat of an ignorant reactionary response, don't you think? As I said, many cultures have the fear of some form of apocalypse. Kindred believed in these stories when they were human, and naturally carried them over into kindred myth. But it doesn't take a supernatural act to cause widespread destruction. Humans and kindred are just as capable of managing their own destruction as a deity. A self-realized Gehenna warrants more vigilance than a god-induced one, don't you agree? Such is my argument, which so frequently falls on deaf ears. What prophecy doesn't have vague apocryphal signs? Let's see. The usual ones cited are the appearance of thin bloods, cane sightings, doom, gloom, that route. For 300 years I've been trying to determine the function of our existence, the kindred's role in the world. I'm not content to attribute it to some act of supernatural biblical vengeance. We exist for a reason. And if it takes another 300, I'll figure it out. Any thoughts? Yes, I've heard that theory before. It certainly seems plausible, but there's little proof to support it. Still, it's a better explanation than a divine sentence for manslaughter.
Life's a splendid thing to indulge in. Pity we're dead. Well, my work here is stolen away into the night. Think I'll do the same. Oh, excuse me, uh, starting to doze off there. Oh, I need to get a guard animal of some sort to alert me when folks come in. Hmm, maybe one of them chimps like on that show Ape Detective? <laughs> oh, that, that monkey always gets his man. Uh, say, Fruit Pie, if you're still up and about in a few hours, uh, why don't you stop by at the end of my shift and I'll treat you to breakfast, huh? Endless stack of flapjacks. Little boysenberry syrup, your security teddy bear. The folly of leadership is knowing that no matter what you do, behind your back there's hundreds, certain that their own solution is the sounder one, and that your decision was the byproduct of a whimsical dart toss. I pronounce the blast sentence, and I soak the critical fallout. I make the decisions no one else will. Leadership. I wear the albatross and a bullseye. The blood hunt on Nines Rodriguez for the murder of Alistair Grout will be called. Rodriguez's execution is only a matter of time. I have lit the fuse. If a war ignites, it's my head they will sharpen the pikes for. At least I can rest easy in knowing that you, my most promising attendant, has relieved me of one encumbrance tonight. Do you need assistance bringing the sarcophagus up to my office? Stolen? Stolen? How? Who would... Oh, Gary. Gary, you treasonous maggot. I should have anticipated your treachery, sewer rat. The Nosferatu primogen. The Nosferatu were responsible for finding out where the sarcophagus was taken after the Dane. And for getting keys to the museum. They were the only ones who knew... It's obvious to me now, my mistake. I want him found. I want him... found. The sarcophagus could be... exploited. Causing who knows what catastrophe to this city. If it were to fall into the wrong hands... The Nosferatu lurk in the filth below the streets of Hollywood. But not even I know just where they hide. Hollywood is, unfortunately, lacking in any Camarilla loyalties. Hollywood's baron is an Anarch named Isaac. Isaac's more civil than the Anarchs downtown, but... Nonetheless, he wears his mistrust of me on his sleeve. He may know how to contact the Nosferatu. Find Gary and get him to talk. That sarcophagus could be used against us. Do not come back until you have it. Now... 
I must announce the blood hunt and bear the brunt of all consequences. Escort her out. 